They're kicking away the means by which working class people access knowledge, culture and fun that have been provided within the library museum sector for decades and decades. They're using austerity as a justification to take away these means by which working people, poor people, have had a chance to emancipate themselves. There is a big say, you can take our library away. They're making cuts in the libraries. Um, they're not closing any of the libraries, but they're going to reduce a lot of them in size. Parts of the buildings will be used for other things. And four of the libraries are going to be community run rather than by professional staff. The library I work in will only be staffed for 15 hours a week. Under 15s won't be able to go into those libraries when they're unstaffed unless they're with an adult. So um, unaccompanied older children or to, who might want to go there to study or after school won't be able to unless it's staffed. A lot of staff are going to lose their jobs. We're having to reapply for our jobs again. We're on strike today. Um, it's a part of the bigger struggle we've been having because a lot of the council's being outsourced. Gates are in the northeast of England. Volunteers are stepping in to take our jobs and we're on the scrap heap. I've got 25 years, I'm a professional, work in the libraries, that's my job. Nobody can squawk into my job and do it. Swindon has currently 15 libraries. Council's original plan was to close 14 of them, so we'd be left with one library for 217,000 people. Um, the revised plan, as we've all been kicking up a good deal of a fuss, is um, the central library and three neighbourhood libraries open for just a very few hours a week and all the rest are going to be offered to volunteers. Nine of the 11 libraries in our town have threatened. We are the oldest public library in the country, founded in 1848, I think it is. They're proposing to move Warrington Library from the site it's been at for 150 years into a redundant shoe shop in the main shopping centre, where they will have to share the space with other services, so they won't even have the whole space. The shoe shop doesn't have a toilet in it, it doesn't have a lift. It's not accessible to the elderly or the disabled. People have stopped coming into the libraries because they don't have new books. There are long waiting lists for the books that they do buy. And after the consultation last year, they then cut back the opening hours dramatically, including in some libraries, they cut a third of the opening hours. One of the main proposals they've had is that they'll just have like um, mini locations where they do lockers. And so you will order your books like an Amazon locker. They plan, you know, you go and you pick them up. Obviously, the library's way more than just a locker. It's a safe space, an equal space that everybody can go and a place for communities to mix. As somebody um, elderly said to me, going to the library is their way of linking with other people, not just old people. They want to link with different ages and what have you. We're about to see universal credits come in, which means that all benefit uh, uh, applications and all information will be exclusively online. Libraries provide digital access to uh, people who can't afford or don't have internet access at home. We've got Labour a Council. Labour Council, it's just really Labour strange. Council cutting yeah. libraries. It's, 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 it's a bizarre set well, of affairs, really. Andrew Carnegie will turn over in his grave. Brent, sadly, as ever, in the vanguard, uh, closed half of its libraries five years ago. Uh, we've been fighting ever since then to get them back. Uh, we've got four of them back in a way by continual political pressure, by annoying our councillors, by getting hundreds and hundreds of people to write, by making life difficult for them. But they're not within the public sector. But we're carrying on fighting because they're really important. We went to the high court, didn't we? We weren't allowed to appeal, um, and that meant that a whole load of very active library campaigners right with the way across Brent's all came together. So our strength has actually been that four of the library campaigns really lasted, didn't they? And we were all determined to keep our premises. In Lambeth, Defend the Ten is about saving all our libraries. We've got the most accessible libraries in the country. We've got libraries that have won digital inclusion awards because of their open access to visually impaired people. The council is still wedded to the idea of shutting our libraries and putting gyms in them, removing all the staff. Quite a lot of us occupied Carnegie Library in April of this year for 10 days. There's still a lot of us involved in the campaign. We're a really strong, solid core of people that aren't going away. What we've got is a council that are very, very right-wing, right-wing Labour, 
who very much want to show themselves as being responsible, you know, budgets have to be set. It's a kind of ironic thing because they're actually spending more money to get this through than they actually would save in the cuts that they want to make. Labour councils need to stand up to the Tories really and not do the Tories, the Tories work. Stand with communities instead of against them, which is what they're doing at the moment. No ifs, no buts, no library cuts, no ifs, no buts. No 95% of uh, galleries funded by local authorities are, uh, are facing serious financial cuts, that's what the Art Fund have said. So really what we've got to do is tell those motherfuckers in the Conservative Party that they've had enough of their bullshit and they need to fund the local authorities properly so they can keep all the libraries and galleries open. The Labour Council in Warsaw, they are sabre rattling over this uh, over this gallery saying they're going to uh, remove the funding but it's completely irresponsible uh, the the gallery in Warsaw is history we cannot afford to forget it's all based around the collection of Jacob Epstein and Epstein in the 1920s had his work daubed with swastikas the Rhodesian government smashed up his work on uh, Africa House and the Daily Mail organized petitions against his work for Warsaw Council <laughs> to threaten they're going to close that. So they're involving us as a nation in a colossal act of anti-Semitism. Goebbels said to destroy a people you have to destroy their culture. That's what they're doing. Maybe some of you who supported us last year who are fighting for 111 days of strike action to stop this place, the National Gallery, to privatise 400 museum workers. We had very many strikes in the National Museums of Wales, strikes at the National Museums of Scotland. But what we need to do is put pressure on the Department for Culture, Media and Sport to stop those cuts happening. In Bromley Library, I work for a Tory council who came to smash our library service. Six of our small ones were going to be put into volunteers and the rest were being privatised. We've just heard we think it's to brilliant, which obviously is terrible news. We have so far had 13 weeks of strike action. Um, the volunteer threat has now gone. Bexley was um, in with Bromley to the privatisation. That is now gone. So we just need now to deal with Bromley Council. We should be one by one doing this on our own. It needs to be a national campaign that everyone gets in and everyone, if necessary, goes out together. Free access should be a right for us all, particularly those without money or power, like me. Our local councils don't want to listen to an 11-year-old boy. I don't have a vote, and clearly I'm not worth spending money on. In effect, my council wants to ban me from going to my library. Now you can tell me that the councils are trying to save money and that makes sense. In which case, why are they trying to spend more money trying to close the libraries than it would just cost to keep them open? Libraries are the key to our community and our lives. Interfering with them tells me that our councils do not really care about education at all. We welcome the news that Jeremy Corbyn supports our movement. And it's great that he wants to invest in arts and culture and public services. But we can't wait until 2020, Jeremy. No, yeah. We need Labour councils like Greenwich to stop closing libraries now. We need them to stop privatising our services. And we need Jeremy to come out and say that now. If Labour councillors are prepared to fight for our services, they should step aside for people who will. Yeah. Yeah.